Urban Rural Action remains steadfast in its mission to prevent intercommunal violence and reduce community versus state violence. With five impactful programs across the U.S. tackling issues related to education, climate, media, health, food, race, and the economy, Urban Rural Action is doing critical work in bringing Americans together despite their geographic, political, racial, and other differences. So I'm now delighted to turn over the floor first to Je Shelley and then to Joe for your remarks. You can also hear Shelley and Joe tomorrow on the PeaceCon panel, U.S. Peace Building, What Comes Next? Thank you so much. And Shelley, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Melanie, for that introduction and for being such an inspiration for this award. I'm a huge believer that we must give change makers and leaders like yourself their flowers while they are here. And I am so happy that not only am I receiving this award, but from you directly. So thank you so much, Melanie. Thank you to Ezra and the entire Alliance for Peace Building team for your leadership across the world and fighting for peace and honoring me today. And then of course, thank you to the Truth National Coalition and Movement for believing in my leadership so that we can get closer to truly tackling some of the deeply rooted systemic issues in this country. By unlocking the truth that we can achieve an honest evaluation of the past and present impacts of institutional and intergenerational racism in this country, we finally put an end to the false and dangerous idea of a value of human hierarchy. At this pivotal moment in American history, our country can no longer ignore racism. We all must be healers and the true healing starts by recognizing and acknowledging the truth. I'm gonna be frank, we are in for an uphill battle on this issue. Our nation is still deeply divided racially and culturally. And now is the time to finally heal these divisions and build a truly racially equitable society. We must continue to stand up, speak out, and act boldly in defense of our communities here and abroad. Even though we face stark challenges with this outgoing presidential administration, we must not grow weary. We must remain steadfast and our resolve must be stronger than ever for a new and brighter future because it is in reach. We must also stay determined to never be satisfied until we achieve the social, racial, and economic justice of our ancestors' dreams. I am more optimistic than ever for our nation's future and for the advancement of the truth, racial healing, and transformation legislation and executive action. But simply, this is our ancestors' work and we must continue to do this work in order to create an equitable future for all. We must reassess our past so that we can create a future that is free and fair for everyone. We must continue to hold our government leaders accountable as we continue to have conversations around racial equity. I know we will get there and I am so happy to receive this, this honor and I'll continue to do the work to make the truth, racial healing and transformation dream a reality. I believe that only through an honest evaluation can we truly get where we need to be. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Shelley. That was so beautiful and powerful. On to you, Joe. Eve, along with Shelley, this award for excellence in peace building. I accept this award with great humility, knowing that there are many other peace builders across the United States, including many probably with us right in this moment, doing incredible work to address conflict dynamics across our country who are equally worthy of recognition for their efforts. And I accept this award with a tremendous amount of gratitude to the Alliance for Peace Building for your leadership over the last several years to promote peace building in the United States. My hope for this community of peace builders is that we demonstrate to related fields, to our partners and to ourselves, the value of applying the same disciplined, thoughtful, rigorous approach that we have honed over the years to, to addressing conflict dynamics in, in conflict zones around the world to advancing peace in the United States. So what does that mean? Well, first and foremost, it means that 
we must analyze conflict dynamics holistically, right? Looking at drivers of conflict across our political, environmental, economic, and social systems. And that means that if we are focusing exclusively on polarization and specifically incivility as a driver of conflict in the United States, we are ignoring the manifestation of organized violence carried out by the state through our criminal justice system. And therefore, when we think about peace building interventions and peace building approaches in the United States, it means that if we are focusing exclusively on dialogue and leaving little room for action, we are leaving in place, we are leaving unaddressed grievances fueled by injustices across our economic, environmental, social, and political systems. Applying a peace building lens to addressing conflict dynamics in the United States mustn't mean that either we build bridges across difference or we fight against injustice. It mustn't mean that we have to choose between either repairing our frayed social fabric on the one hand or standing up against oppression. We must do both. And I believe that coming together across geographic, political, racial, and other differences to build relationships, explore different perspectives on issues, and take action together to achieve shared goals is the way we can address injustice and advance positive peace in our country. So building relationships across our divides, working together across our divides is a vehicle for addressing injustice and advancing positive peace. And so for the last two minutes of my five minute presentation, I'd like for us to show a short video that highlights urban rural actions work across geographic, political and ideological divides to reverse mass incarceration, build consensus on criminal justice reforms across Philadelphia and Adams County, Pennsylvania, because I think it is an illustration of how we can work together across difference to promote peace and justice in the United States. So that is our cue to show the video. Thank you very much. They throw us in cells, and then all of a sudden, they lost us. They put us in situations, they put us in situations, they throw us in cells, and then all of a sudden, they lost us. They put us in situations trying to force us to tell. So tell me what you do when you're only 17. They lock us up in cages and they throw away your dream. We're a group of 27 community members split between Philadelphia and Adams County with direct or indirect experience with a criminal justice system that needs to change. We are professionals, students, retirees, criminal justice reform advocates, and some new to the space, all with different political views across the ideological spectrum. I was locked up in charge as an adult at the age of 14. I never had the opportunity to explore this. It's actually been really eye-opening to me working with people from Adams County, seeing how some of the problems that are plaguing Philadelphia are also plaguing Adams County, but at the same time there are differences. We have a lot of similarities, especially in the criminal justice system. Most people who are behind bars ultimately re-enter society. Practices like solitary confinement make that much harder. We believe that the presumption of innocence is a fundamental right. And that pre-trial detention and cash bail should be the exception and not the rule. People under 18 should not be incarcerated in adult facilities. Veteran and treatment courts should be established to support rehabilitation and to reduce incarceration. Re-entry plans should be created for all people from the first day of incarceration. Thank you so much, Joe, Shelly, 
Congratulations to both of you. I think you both uh, reminded us all that it isn't an either or. There is no peace without justice. We have an enormous uphill struggle ahead of us, as Shelley so eloquently stated. But Shelley, I can tell you we're in it with you and we welcome your leadership in carrying this forward. And Melanie, we all remain absolutely inspired by your example. We're so proud to be able to honor you today. And we all really look forward to hearing from Shelley and Joe tomorrow at the 2 p.m. panel, U.S. Peace Building, what comes next? Uh, it's just an incredible honor to me to, to be here with all of you. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to, to hear your resolve and your determination, but we're really all in this together to shape a better future for all Americans. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.